another thing that I wanted to bring up to you, which I really admire about your story, is that people look at your accolades. They look at five bronze stars. They look at two purple hearts. They look at road into Afghanistan on horseback. You are what anyone across history would consider to be like a man's man. Whenever you came out and you were outspoken on what we need to do for PTSD, you have a service dog that you go mm -hmm. around with. Was he's that, in here, by the way. He's right, a delight. He's Victor, here. hello. He's welcome to the show. Black German <laughs> Shepherd. He's awesome. Snoozing. Was it a difficult decision for you to reach to say, I need to be outspoken about this because the men and women underneath me need to see a strong leader, somebody who is viewed as this strong I'm going to be the one that steps out on mental health. Yes, uh, it was very. It was a very difficult decision to make. My, my my wife started. She's a nurse, and she made a um, concerted effort to do a lot of her uh, study on, you know, post traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury and all that other stuff. Early on, she started very early. Um, because she started seeing a change in me and she started seeing a change in our friends and she started, you know, so she noticed all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And she was telling me in 2007 and eight, hey, you need to go get some help, right? Um, but- And I'm not sure at that point you weren't super receptive to that. No, I was not receptive to <laughs> yeah. it. Uh, and, and the military would have never been no. receptive to right. it. And I would tell you that they're not fully receptive to it right now. Right. Mm -hmm. They have established all the programs, right? And all the commanders talk about it. But the approach is terrible, right. right? Their approach is terrible. And I've been very outspoken about this. And it's something I want to do something about when I get to Congress, when I get into the Senate. But was the, the, the PTS kind of the catalyst for you to say, all right, I need to serve more, I need to do more, and that's what prompted you to get into politics? Uh, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a constant, um, you know, uh, I'm constantly presented with... Um, with challenges by people that because I have post-traumatic stress and because I suffer from the effects of traumatic brain injury, uh, pain management issues, sleep disorder, all this other stuff, that somehow I can't be a high-functioning individual, mm -hmm. right? And that's so, so blatantly false, right? We know it. Medically, we know it. Right. Scientifically, we know it. So in 2013, as I struggled, up to that point, my wife drew the line in the sand and said, hey, listen, you're going to go get some help or the following things are going to happen, right? I like how she gave you like a plan of action, too. Yeah, she did. She talked to you uh, like, yeah, a, yeah. like in words that you yeah. can understand. There's going to be a primary, well, secondary, and tertiary. Yeah, action. she's... she's uh, not bake these cookies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's household <laughs> six, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. She's in charge. Yeah. Right. Uh, and she laid it out and... and HH6 and I knew she was for a spouse, yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I knew she was right, and so I, <coughs> excuse me, I went to Longstool Regional Medical Center, and I went up there and met a nurse by the name of Sarah McNary, who is just an unbelievable advocate for our service members, uh, getting help for post-traumatic stress, TBI, and everything. Anyways, she put me through a program, get me diagnosed, I got officially diagnosed, properly diagnosed, everything properly entered into my my records the whole nine yards took care of me in a way that um, I probably wouldn't have been taken care of if I if I hadn't been a newly promoted one star mm. right and I went through two years of therapy right nobody knew I was going through this therapy because I was a coward right mm. I was chicken shit to come out and say anything because I didn't want you know people to use it against me, I didn't want it to affect my career. Um, and when I got the honor to take command of Special Operations Command Africa, which was a complete surprise to me, I, did, I didn't know I was gonna get that, that command, and I got it. And that's a huge one. And that's yep. a huge one. I said, you know what, I can't do this anymore. I can't look at myself in the mirror. We got people suffering mm -hmm. in this unit, we got people suffering in soft, I can see it. So I went to my senior enlisted advisor, Master Sergeant Puglisi, or excuse me, Master Chief Puglisi, who is uh, the um, a Navy SEAL, and he said, I'm suffering from the same stuff, and he went up and went through the same drill I did. Damn. And together, we, we contacted the leadership, and we put together a program, and we talked to every single person in the unit, 
and we said you're not going to be taken off your team, you're not going to be secluded, you're not going to be stigmatized, you're not going to lose your clearance, we're going to provide you top cover, which, mind you, is inconsistent with DOD policy. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But I didn't care. And nobody was going to tell me not to do it at this point because it just wouldn't pass the New York Times and Washington Post test. Right. right. <laughs> Go ahead. Right. Because we're helping all these guys. Right. right. And you don't want us to Explain help them. Explain that one away. And, and, oh, by the way, they're more resilient and our readiness is better. And what we noticed after 26 months of this was a sharp reduction in alcohol and drug incidents in the unit, which was a problem. Right. Sexual harassment. Uh, inappropriate behavior in the workplace, mm -hmm. um, all those negative things trended way down. And we knew because of command climate surveys that we injected in this process to track it. And I think that that's such an important distinction to make that it, PTS is not just something that I think forever people have thought about it as this is going to be a man, woman who loses their mind, stripped down to their underwear, runs into the woods with a gun, and that's how they're going to deal with PTSD. But no, like it, no. It, it harbors itself in your brain and it results and it manifests in ways like alcoholism, making poor life choices, being um, constantly underneath your performing level and things like that. And I think that's very important to, to point out to people. No, I, I you know, I, I would agree with you 100 percent. And. You know, it, it it also saves it saves lives. It saves marriages. I mean, one of one of my uh, sergeant majors um, went through and took all forty eight of his guys in after we talked to him. Mm -hmm. Right, me and my master chief. You know, hey, how many people have been to Afghanistan? You know, everybody's hands go up. How many people have been to Iraq? People's hands go up. How many people have been in a firefight? Everybody's hands go up. How many people have been in a bomb blast? You know, large percentage. Of How many people have been around blasts that have gone off? How many people have been affected by blasts? How many people know they've been affected by blasts? Okay, all right, good. How many of you don't sleep well? How many of you think you drink too much? Come on, raise your hands. Right, boom. You know, here's... We, wow, the entire room yeah. smells like bourbon. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. Uh, hey, here's my story. Master Chief tells his story. We're giving you an opportunity to go to, to go down the launch stool and get everybody checked out, right? And you had to know that that was going to carry weight. When you had stars in your shoulders or all those right. chevrons, you had to know like that right. was going exactly. to be effective. Oh, yeah, and it was. He took them all down there. And they got programmed in. It takes three days to go through. The, three days is nothing to invest in your service members' Um, health, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we treat our equipment better. Mm -hmm. You know, we got a report. You'll get two days SIQ for fucking wisdom teeth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, you know, mental health and physical health and spiritual health, that's a triad, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and it can't be broken, right? I mean, it is an important triad. And you got to have that, you know. Uh, and, and so Sergeant Major went in and he, uh, they found a tumor on his brain when they were giving him an MRI to check and see wow. if he had any uh, traumatic brain injury because of the blast, right? Now, that was a life-threatening tumor that if it hadn't been found when it was, probably would have resulted in his death later. Wow. Mm. So the impetus to go there was us saying, hey, we're concerned about your mental health. Now, he is the only one that we had to take off a team but well, we took him off a team to send him to Walter Reed to get his tumor taken care of. Which I'm sure he was yeah. okay with. Yeah. And he got his hip replaced that was 10 years overdue because he never made the time to get his hip replaced from a previous injury. And so this guy comes out of Walter Reed, a new man. We don't want to keep you too long, General. Thank you so much. Oh, We're you're welcome.